Yo, what up? How you guys doing out there today? This is your boy Roto Beast. I'm here with my boy Jeremy. We're here to present you our NFL Week 3 Monday Showdown Special. If you're new to this channel, please make sure and click the subscribe button below. This is where you can watch all my MLB, NFL, and NBA videos. And if you haven't came and checked out our website here at DFSCheatSheet.com, you're absolutely missing out. We have all the tools to help you compete with the pros day in and day out, including a complete optimizer, tons of content, daily fan to Wayne King's cash line update. We're truly a one-stop shop for our DFS needs. So make sure to come check out the site here at DFSCheatSheet.com. Say what up, Jeremy. How you doing out there, bro? Boring. This is a boring game, bro. It's a boring yeah, game. Sure. It's another bootleg game the NFL has on a primetime spot. How the Bears yeah, we, already we, got two of these? We we literally, I, I just, right before we jumped on here, I, I had to ask you the question. I'm like, you would think they wanted to uh, one game on a night that they would make it a really good game so people would want to actually watch it. This is now Monday games, Thursday games. Every single one has been damn boring so far. You know, let's get a good primetime game. Come on, NFL. Got to step your game up. But, um, yeah, hey, it is what it is, though. One thing, I, you know, we do got to take into consideration, there is a lot of money to be made out there tonight. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be part of that. Um, another really good week three main slate cash lines uh, did very well once again. Uh, we've been on absolute fire to start the season. Um, you know, make sure to check out the site dfscheatsheet.com. You can still get our uh, annually uh, our annual uh, membership. You know, half off as long as cash lines keep cashing. We're going to continue having that deal. Use promo code NFL two thousand nineteen to take advantage of that. And yeah, man, let's jump into this game. Yeah, absolutely. So hey. Not a lot of injury news to get into either. Trey Burton questionable. He practiced, so, you know, he probably plays. Eddie Pinero, the kicker, there's a lot of people trying to figure out what's going on with him tonight. Uh, but a couple of things worth noting with that, the, he traveled with the team. You have to let the NFL know if a player does not travel. So he did travel with them, and the Bears didn't sign another kicker. So you have to assume he's kicking tonight, um, even though they've got it listed as a game-time decision. And – the glass man himself, Jordan Reed, out. So uh, Vernon Davis, the, the tight he's end for the, them. He's the Anthony Davis of the NFL, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's he's the glass man for sure, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so if you want, we'll kind of we'll jump into it. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll just kind of go position by position real quick, and then we can kind of get get you know kind of do that route. So I mean, we'll start at the quarterback. So who do you have more interest in, Case Keenum, or you have more interest in Mitch Trubisky tonight? Look. Every week we've done these videos, the one thing I've said is you have to figure out how to be contrarian, man. You, you just – whether you're max entering or playing two or three lineups, I almost feel like if you're playing two or three lineups, make one chalky, make one contrarian. You have to have interest in both sides. I mean, all I can do is break down kind of from a current season standpoint. Case Keenum had 27.2 FanDuel points in week one. He had 16.74 in week two against the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Keenum hasn't played bad. We know Keenum's been around the league. I do have interest in Keenum. The problem is, is the Bears defense is really, really good, and that is going to lead everybody to probably kind of stay away from putting Keenum in an MB MVP spot and, and using him more as a flex play. But I can't think of anybody else on the Washington side of things that's going to rack up enough points to garner putting him in the MVP spot. I, I can't think of – I mean – Adrian Peterson, does he have a 100-yard game in him and a two-touchdown game in him? Does he have that in him against his defense? Is there a wide receiver on this team that you just think, oh, man, he's in a really good spot? No, there's not. So, I mean, if they're going to move the football, which, you know, who knows if they will, but if they're going to, the guy that's going to probably get the most fantasy points from Washington side is, is Case Keenum. So, you know, being contrarian – looking at things from a Washington standpoint, and then Keenum's probably going to be the, the stat monster, if you will, for Washington. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I definitely agree with you. One thing I do want to say about Mitch Trubisky, it's like if he's going to kind of figure it out, you know, kind of get rolling this season, I think this could be a game, you know, going against um, the Washington defense who hasn't been very good this year. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean – I don't know. It's tough. It's tough because I, I don't really care for both guys, but I agree with you that Keenum is probably going to be the guy that will probably get more fantasy points. I mean, that's really kind of where I'll leave it at um, when it comes to uh, to quarterbacks. Uh, one more thing. I mean, what do you think? Like, like, what do you think is going on with Trubisky? Because like he was doing good last year. 
I, I don't think that I don't necessarily think that the case Keenum's going to have more fantasy points at the quarterback position. I'm just saying from a contrarian standpoint, I if you're going to you. take, if you're going to take some risk and look, let, let's just, we, we kind of do this every week, right? In order to win one of these big tournaments, you have to figure out a, what do you think the field is going to do? And B, can you leverage what the field is going to do to your advantage? Okay. The field is going to say the bears are the best team. There's not a lot of sexy names on the Washington Redskins. The, all the sexy is around the Chicago Bears. David Montgomery had a huge increase in rushing attempts from week one to week two. I, I just think that if you're going to play somebody in a contrarian spot on the Washington Redskins, start naming off some of their players, right? They, Terry, I, Terry McLaurin? They got is nobody a, good. <laughs> is Terry McLaurin a two-touchdown guy today? Right. Hey, no, I the mean, best play, the best play outside of Keenum is going to have to be a kicker. <laughs> we talked about the kickers on these showdown slates. <laughs> I, I, I think the, that Terry McLaurin is a guy that, that, you, that you have to get some exposure to in your MVP spot. We saw last night Cooper Cup, a wide receiver. All the tournament winners last night had Cooper Cup as their MVP spot, had the two big touchdowns. I, McLaurin is another guy, but – you know, he's going to need a two-touchdown game to do more than what Case Keenum will have to do to keep them in this football game. So it's the, that's the contrarian side. What do I think is going on with Trubisky? I mean, he's not that bad. It's not terrible. 26-45, 228 against Green Bay. We've seen Green Bay and Mike Pettin's defense come on. They, you know, they create turnovers. they got a lot of good young players over there. And then against Denver – you know, 16 to 27, it's 11 incompletions. It's just not real efficient. And th- what I think it is, is exactly what I've said it was all year. Allen Robbins, I mean, if you remember, we did this showdown video before the Thursday night kickoff game with Green Bay and Chicago. Allen right. Robinson on a lot of teams in the NFL is not a number one wide receiver. He's a number one wide receiver in Chicago. Right. I get you. Trey so- Burton. Got some love, right? But Trey Burton's been hurt. He had two, I think, two targets last week. So, you know, right. he doesn't have weapons around him. You got a, a young running back in Montgomery who's got a lot of the, the, the focus there, right? I mean, they're inept, in my opinion, offensively. Right? That's why it's a shock to me that they've been one of the favorites to come out of the NFC. You compare them to Dallas. Right. No, for sure. Um, as, as a football, like, you know, as a football coach, do you feel like, you know, maybe it's a little bit of the play calling as well? Because like you said, I mean – Trubisky, he's he's putting up, you know, he's getting yards, he's moving the ball. They're just not finishing drives. He hasn't thrown a passing touchdown this year yet. I just think that there's some coaching that's not going on. I'll give you a perfect example with Trubisky. There is a fourth down play in the Thursday night game with Green Bay, and there was a motion built into the play to identify man coverage, and Trubisky ends up rushing it. It was an RPO play for one. It was there was an RPO. It was a built-in RPO. Hand the ball off, right? If it's man, pull the ball off its zone and throw it to the slant on the outs on from the outside single up receiver. They re- put a motion in. They identified it was man coverage. All they had to do was hand the ball off and get one yard from the running back. He pulls it. Is looks like he's fooled that it's man coverage, and then ends up having to run with it. So. That that if that answers your question, that play to me is a summary of what's going on. It's it's the coaching. It, it's up to you as a coach to call plays and put plays in around the players you have that can execute what you've got. If he can't execute RPO plays, stop calling them. Right. No, that made that made sense for sure. And that's why that's kind of what I was thinking a little bit as well. Like you want to play to your player strengths. You know, is what it comes down to at the end of the day. Um, so what do you think uh, running back-wise? we got two two backfields that are basically having timeshares right now. Um, you know, Cohen's the more, you know, uh, out the backfield catcher. you got Montgomery getting the rushes. And, and it's basically the same exact thing with Washington. Adrian Peterson's more the runner. Chris Thompson's more the catcher. I mean, what do you, what do you think? I mean, I was, I'm disappointed that Geis isn't there to be honest with you, because it's a guy that I was really high on when the season started. I talked to you a lot about this dude. I thought this dude was going to have a really solid season. You got Adrian Peterson. I mean, 10 attempts for 25 yards. That's, that's, that's where we're at with Adrian Peterson, right? I mean, he does have one touchdown. 
Right. Chris Thompson is Chris Thompson's a ball catcher, right? I mean, they've used they've never used him as a feature back there. They've always used him out as a backfield. He's been forced into a couple of spots where he's had to kind of carry the load for a whole game. But I mean, he has 12 receptions for 116 yards. He has five carries for 13 yards. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously we're gonna have to play some of these guys tonight. I mean, me personally, I think you just get a little bit of exposure to each of them and just hope one of them gets in the end zone. I mean, there's no, there's not one guy like, for example, we had uh, Cam Newton a couple weeks ago. It was Cam Newton and um, what is the running back's name? Uh, McCaffrey. Yeah. You, know, you have McCaffrey. He's a clear cut workhorse that's gonna get, you know, a, a lot of work, and, and it's easy to throw a guy like that in your MVP spot today. So it's a lot harder. There's not it's not so clear cut. Um, so when it comes to running backs for me, I'm just gonna try to kind of mix up my exposure that way and, and just kind of just kind of you know hope when, hopefully one of these guys gets in the end zone and um, you know it, it's that particular lineup that uh, that I got him in. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on to the receivers, uh, I mean you talked about Allen Robinson, even though he isn't you know clear cut number one on most teams, he still is the best receiver in this game. I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, 20, kind of- yeah, I mean, so he had 20 targets so far this season. You know, he's 11 receptions. It's not a very high conversion percentage for the amount of times he's been targeted, but some of that you can blame on Trubisky. 11 receptions for 143 yards, no touchdowns yet. That's what you're looking for tonight is the big play, the touchdown. He can move the chains. He can get down the field. Um, he is probably the best receiver in this game. But the guy that, that I'm not sure if anybody really realizes who he is, because he's not a big name, anybody's really ever heard of before is, is Terry McLaurin. Right. I was going to mention. Who, who's heard of Terry McLaurin? Well, hey, 16 I, targets, 10 receptions, 100, 187 yards. He's had a touchdown each of the first two games. Case Keenum likes him, right? So he's going to get the ball thrown to him. He's going to get the ball thrown to him. So, right. you know, th- that's another guy you have to look at. And then. You, you're right. I think that you build some of these lineups out where you, you use the flex position to put a guy like Tariq Cohen, to put a guy like Vernon Davis, to put a guy like Chris Thompson um, in your lineup because they do have the ability to catch the ball. And if you're talking about Cohen and Thompson, it's out of the backfield and they're not going to win you a tournament by getting six catches for 55 yards and a touchdown. They're going to get win you a tournament by getting two catches for 90 yards and one of those is a long third down screen play or swing check down that, that they take to the house. And we've seen both these guys have big plays like that. So, you know, getting some exposure to those guys in a flex spot, I can see that. For me, the MVP candidates are pretty simple. It's Allen Robinson, it's McLaren, it's Case Keenum, and it's Mitchell Trubisky. And you, and you kind of move on. If you want to get, you know, a little deeper, you can put Montgomery in the MVP spot. Montgomery is a guy that, like I said, He went from only carrying it six times in week one to carrying it 18 times in week two. He did have three targets Uh, last week. The only target he saw in week one was a 27-yard reception. So, you know, if they can start putting some of these things together, I think one thing with Chicago, too, is they didn't they play the Sunday night game last week? Um, I think they did. Denver or they played they played Sunday afternoon in the late four o'clock Eastern spot at Denver. They played the Thursday night game the week before, and now here they are on a Monday night. So, I mean, they haven't had a regular real week yet. Um, right. It'll be interesting to see. Maybe they can start putting some things together uh, with, with with what they're trying to accomplish. We'll yeah. see. Definitely. Last thing before we get out of here, which kicker you like more? <laughs> we, we've been mentioning kickers on these showdowns, and uh, so far the kickers have been in the winning lineups. I mean, which which one do you like more? What side are you on? Yeah, Dustin Hopkins, and and for not for not because of you know we don't know if uh, Eddie, Eddie Pinero is playing or not. He traveled with the team. I'm sure he's playing, but Hopkins is a proven kicker, and and not just he's a proven kicker. But yeah. here's the thing, for me, Washington should be able to move the ball a little bit when it gets to red zone opportunities and you don't have a lot of weapons in a condensed space or playmakers. I think it gets really hard to score touchdowns. And I think that's where you, you, you see the edge go to Hopkins. I think he may get more opportunities for longer field goals than Pinero may get in this game. Yeah, for sure. Um, that, that's really where I'm at for today's slate. You know, like I said it, it's an ugly one, but there's a lot of money out there. And, hey, hopefully one of us get that money, bro. I'm looking forward to tonight. Uh, thanks for jumping on this video, helping me out, Jeremy. Um, if you guys haven't already, hey, make sure to check out the site, dfscheatsheet.com. And, hey, good luck tonight, guys. Peace out.